Abba, how we love you. He's a good father. He's filled with mercy and compassion. His grace flows from a throne. And his kingdom come through his son. Right here, this day, may eternal life open up. May the spirit, heart, the soul connect. May oneness be known by we love you, Lord. The gates of hell cannot enter in this place where hearts connect one with God. May this word go straight into the spirit heart. May it come alive and bring forth fruit, eternal life. We love you, Jesus. Fill this house as you prepare the way. Let everyone take up their position. Let the revelation knowledge of Christ, the Redeemer, be known in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we had a wonderful time yesterday. You know what? God love you, men. (laughs) You know, Pastor Joe, my husband came to terms with this thing, with a driving thing. (laughs) And nowadays he says this, when I'm like, whoa, watch. He says, what should I do without you? (laughs) Thank God for you. Isn't it? So, today I'm going to talk about a subject that's not so easy, but I trust that the Spirit of God has already opened up our hearts to receive. And for some reason, God always sent me with a message to America and to give a word. And you remember last time, the word was really hard, and it was about the hate speech in the house. And the thing is that, We need to get perspective, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, the walking in eternal life, the walking in that, how it looks, and what happened in the realm of the spirit, because, you know, sometimes we just live by what we see, and we observe, and we speak out. So God literally sent me with a message, and he said last time, I want you to speak about the division in the house. Because a house divided by itself cannot stand. So when we talk about the house, I know we know about the White House. But this is the house that God is first concerned. And the house is this. Right? So we need to come to terms, to a place of how does this house look like and what is God busy doing with this house? He's preparing His temple. He's preparing the house. Because He has a, a... wider spectrum. He's, his thoughts are not our thoughts. I loved what you share about that man because about 20 years, this is my journey. And, you know, I get confronted daily with people with, what if you guys made a better choice? What if that? What if that? What if? I wouldn't have been here. What if God asked of us To lift our eyes and seek for the bigger picture. So the message God said to me last time is, the house is divided. And he literally gave me a a word and he dropped it in my spirit. And I literally, my husband sat next to me on the bed and I looked at him and I said, God says, he's going to raise up Robert Kennedy 
to take Trump's hand and he's going to build a bridge. My husband looked at me and he said, whoa, isn't he dead? <laughs> I said, well, God is busy raising the dead, it seems. <laughs> so the first church I said that, they looked at me and the pastor's like, you know when your mother pulled the eye? You know when your mom like... So the first pastor I could see. So I just turned my back. But afterwards, I, I hurt, you know. Mm -mm. Second church, third church. And I think by the time I came here, I was like, okay. I'm not going to say a thing. But I did speak a little bit about the hatred. <clears throat> but as I went back, I said, okay, God, I did it. But it doesn't look like they're accepting it. He says, because it comes from a different dimension. And if you not, your eyes on me, and your eyes on man, and man-made ways, you will not see. He says, so go back and show them that there's another way of walking. It's called eternal walk. So God did it for me. He got him in, and they shake their hands. And I believe God did it for me. But anyway, so God showed me that exactly what you shared this morning, Pastor, that when God asks you to do something, a prophetic word works like this. God takes your spirit and it shows you the eternal. He shows you the, the front and he says, go back, run back and go and tell them. And now it's the house's job to accept or to throw away. And in that, I also say, test the spirit, right? But we're going to get into a place where we are in that the end of age has already turned. It's the kingdom age that entered in. Amen. And for that, you have to open your spirit for God's spirit to touch your spirit and to teach you. You cannot look at man. You need to find out by yourself. Amen. So I'm going to read to you in scripture, but I'm first going to speak. So God, end time people will end time. I hope your spirit can get that. God's end time people will be the people who will be at the end of time. Hallelujah, man. That stretch you, and that will make your spirit in a stretch, in a split, in a second. God says, I am who I say I am. And you are who I say you are. So what that means is as we draw near to the end of age, we will increasingly learn, hear the word learn, how to walk into the eternal it is a place where you abiding above the boundaries. Because earth has boundaries. And we are bound by those boundaries. Even, in, even if you read scripture, if you don't read through your spirit, you will be bound with knowledge. Because the letter kill, but the spirit brings life. And if you're going to be bound by time, you're going to die. But if you're not going to be bound by time, there's an eternal life. There was a day when a woman came in our house. And when we still stayed in Johannesburg, Pretoria area, we lived in a community area. So anybody can't just enter into your house, you know. So my doors were open, we were secure, no one can come in. And all of a sudden I saw this woman, I heard this woman standing in my house speaking. And I went down and I'm like, how did you enter in? I was surprised. But anyway, she was very thin, very, very thin, sick. I could see she's sick. And I said, can I help you with anything? She says, yes, I need prayer. I mean, I could see. 
But my, my spirit was actually asking, do you know you, you're on your way? What do you want me to pray for you? What's your expectation? And she says, I want to ask Aldo, how do a person die? I thought, whoa, that's weird. But okay, and as I was as a mom, you know, I was like, uh-oh, we're not going to do that. But he was upstairs and he heard that. If it was his spirit or his ears, I don't know. But he came down and he can't walk by himself, right? So he was coming down the stairs, the stairs full. I got him up and he says, Mom, I'll show her how you die. I'm like, no, I didn't think so. He says, let me tell her, let me show her. And he wants to hold her, and I said, no, because she was this thin. I said, no, wait, I'll stand in the middle. She can stand this side, you can stand this side. And He says, close your eyes, and we're all going to take a step. And I thought, no, I'm not closing my eyes. <laughs> I'm going nowhere now. <laughs> but he says, close your eyes. And I close my eyes. He says, Jesus says, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will not even release his grip on you. Surely he will not. He says, okay, ma'am, take a step and open your eyes. He says, this is how. There's no time. He's no man that he can lie. He's right here with us this day. In this moment. So the first thing we need to do is break the boundary. Yes. And know. I, God didn't design me for this. He designed me for an eternal destiny. Yes. He designed me for an inheritance from eternal to year. And me for him and him for me. And I'm in him and him in me. And this is the place. I need to take my position in right now. There's many pressure on the realm of time. This is the realm of time. So Jesus taught that those who come to him have everlasting life. John 3, 16. So right now we have eternal life in our spirit. That's why your spirit can be there and here in the same place. Your spirit can live in Christ. Your spirit can see. Your spirit can hear. Your spirit, your spirit tells you, no, yes, go, don't go. But many people I met, their spirits are not trained into godliness. Paul said to Timothy, hey, you better train your spirit in, in godliness. You know, when you're young, you train your body, and it's good to train your body. It's good to do all these things. But how about training your spirit? How about training your spirit that your spiritual eyes can open, that your ears can hear, the age that you are in, the time that we are in? And it's such an upside-down kingdom, such an upside-down kingdom, because when you enter into that gate and you enter into that place, he tells you, now you go into faith rest. How beautiful is that? Faith, rest. Isn't that beautiful? What does that mean? Strife goes out. Oh, hallelujah. Strife. The body of Christ has a serious problem with strife. Because we don't understand. So, how do we access this timeless place? Of God's presence. How do we access that place of rest? How do we access that place of abundance and the grace and the revelation knowledge of Christ that flows? And he says, I want to fill you up with that. How do I enter in that place? It's a plump line. This is what it's about. We have schedules, we have meetings, appointments, deadlines. And all of these things fuels us with anxiety and strife and pride. Am I saying that this is not right? Of course not. This is the gathering of the brethren coming together in unity. We need unity. 
We need unity in the house. Look what God did there with Robert Kennedy. He was an outsider, but God put him in, in, a, in the line. Doesn't matter where you are. You see, we don't see the hope of God in people. We don't see that everyone is redeemable. They are redeemable. The son died for them too. There's a mercy bowl and our prayers need to be used for God's kingdom. Our words cannot go to the kingdom of darkness. The power that we release from the place where we are, we stand in authority. We carry authority. Christ in me is authority. When I speak, He says, speak to the earth. Speak to the rock. Speak to the mountain. Speak out. The love of God is in the house. But release that. How? Pray. Pray. So, these fear talk about the end time. And I'm telling you this, read your Bible. It is going to happen. I'm sorry to tell you. But it's only going to shake if you're in this line. That's much as it's going to shake you. But if you come in the plumb line, you're going to be strong in the Lord. And he's might. And God is going to use you as the front runner in the armies. And he's going to use your spirit to rise up above the occasion. You see, we live in this instead of the vertical presence of God. We need to bring the presence of God in everything we do. In the conversations. But I see... And I hope I'm going to get there. But we are afraid of reality. We are. Truth is reality. So the Lord seeks to deliver us from the fear of the end. That woman that came in, she was afraid of her end. There's no such word as end in God's kingdom. There's no end. Paul speaks in Ephesians 2. God's power raised us up from the dead. I hope your spirit can hear. It is only God's spirit that can raise you out of a mindset of debt, death. Death. And bring you alive. And it depends if you have eternal value, eternal vision, or do you think it's everything about this life? So, God wants us to walk and learn how to walk in His Spirit. Because it's only by His Spirit that we can able, be able to do it. And God is busy teaching each one of us, obedience to come back. Let the spirit of man get up. Many years ago, Aldous said to me, Mom, healing start inside out. And I wasn't, I wasn't ready to hear that. I needed the outside healing. I needed the manifestation outside. That's normal. I'm a parent. But as my journey increased and the road became more narrower and narrower, I realized, praise God, He used the evil even. And He turned it around for His glory. Hallelujah. This is who He is. But only if you have eternal vision. But the sad fact is that we fail to spend time with the Spirit of God. And we rather fight with our disagreements. You know, with you operate in the Spirit of God, you will, you will face the facts. You will stand up and say, I don't think, I think we need to pray about this thing. I, need to, we, I think we need to find out about the idols in our hearts. Because many times we are pushed by the idols in our hearts. We need to get into this place, this plump line. We pray 
We call upon God. But God says, I want you to open up your spirit heart to my spirit. Spirit heart mind. Soul heart mind. Body heart mind. Come in alignment. John 16 verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will take this word, the revelation knowledge of Christ. He will lift the veil over our eyes. He will open our spirit hearts to see, to understand, to find a way to say, I will never be alone. I will never go through this alone. And even in this, God is going to raise me up to be part of this army. I don't need to run away and hide under the chair. There's a fear over this country about the end of time. Why don't you rejoice? We have to walk it out. So Holy Spirit will guide us. He will speak and he will disclose to us what we otherwise would never know or even attain. I really think that we have to come closer to Holy Spirit. You know, when you have a love relationship with God, John 17, 3 speaks about eternal life. It's knowing Him. It's knowing Him. It is a journey we all have. And we start it and we walk through the things in our lives. And God takes us closer and closer. And we, this love relationship with Him and the things of earth, the earth become less for us. And we're drawn into the heart of the Father. And the Father has a mission and a call for each one of you. Don't think it's for certain people. You know, I, I learn a lot from a young man with a severe head injury who is very impaired, can't do much, but his spirit is alive. I learn so much. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And there are issues in our hearts that the Holy Spirit alone can not only reveal, but also remove. We need to let go. But how? Listen to him. God doesn't come to condemn, but to save. His voice is salvation. That's his voice. That's why he sent his son. Jeremiah said this word, and I honestly, after 20 years, believe every word that he also said. He says, the heart of man is the most deceitful above all things. And that's why David says in Psalm 51, will you please search my heart, dear God? What am I busy? Am I busy with eternal vision? Or am I fighting for my rights? Am I just busy fighting here? Or am I busy... Really, what does God see in this? Holy Spirit, what, what do you want me to pray into this? Because with this, I'm not saying everything that's happening is right. Of course it's not. Evil arise. But God is God, and He's going to bring it all to the surface. He's going to give everyone a chance that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Son of God. We cannot objective. Just knowing ourselves, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, He sees and He understands even the ways we walk. Trust Him. You said it this morning, trust Him. Trust Him. He cannot deceive. He brings truth. It's our spirit that is linked to our idols in the heart that deceive us. Even with a religion word on our lips, we can be deceived. The ancient Greeks used the same word for truth as they did for the word reality. 
That's a hard one. So I can say he's a spirit of reality. What does he do? He take my hand and he show me reality and he say, let me show you the revelation knowledge of Christ in this circumstance. In this circumstance, Christ be revealed in this. Be revealed in this. Be revealed in this. He shows us the reality of our need, but he also shows us the reality that for God, a Father who answers our prayers. To hear him is to hear eternal voice. I have uh, been to a conference earlier this month of Heavenly Encounters of Randy Kay. I don't know if who of you know about Randy, but go, have you been there? Oh, yeah, I see you now. How are you doing? Oh, and that really blessed me. Can you agree with me? It really, really blessed me. You know, after 20 years of walking with the Lord and walking this journey with Aldo, there were so many things that me and my husband just looked at each other like, oh, I get it. I get it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. God said the same thing to everyone. Yeah. He spoke his word to every one of them. There were so many things that we heard that made our, our hearts just melt and like, oh, we couldn't understand it, God, because we didn't have then eternal vision. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Yeah. You know, when Aldous starts speaking, he couldn't speak for long. But when he eventually starts speaking, he just said, like we sang this morning, holy, 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 holy. And my Josh was tiny and he pulled me on my skirt and he says, is that all that he's going to say? Where do you think his spirit was? In alignment. And then, five o'clock in the afternoons, he would start crying, because he can't cry till this day, but crying out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And we're like, please, don't do that. We close the doors and the windows, because people already said things. So Randy Kay was testifying the last night and he was telling his own story. And he said, it was the hardest thing for me to come back. He says, I was grieving to come back. I was grieving. My spirit was grieving. He says, till one day I say to the Lord, I will not be able to do this anymore. I'm not made for you. And God says, son, you made for me. You made for me. You made to glorify me. And all of a sudden, I, me and Tina, we got it. He was grieving heaven. He was grieving eternal. And nowadays, his little face looks different. You know why? His parents took his hand. And bring kingdom down. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, right standing with God. And all the rest will be added unto you. And that's rest. That's rest. And another thing that I quickly want to share that was really wonderful for me as a mom to hear. One of all these letters said, when the accident happened, Jesus immediately kissed me. He picked me up and he took me to him. Every one of those people testified that immediately when it happened. You know, when we on earth, we like in time, we, oh, did they suffer? How did they suffer? How long did they suffer? You know that questions? Normal, we humans. They said not one of them said they suffered. The moment it happened, Jesus was right there. Because he never leaves us nor forsake us. And they never had pain. No pain. He immediately took them into that place. And the joy and the peace. God says, how about in the time that you are in, the darkest hour. Your darkest, darkest, darkest hour. Is that the end of time for you? 
It seems like that, how people are worried, anxious, afraid. How about he says, I'll be there. I'll be right there. I'll be there. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to give you more wisdom, more understanding. The seven spirits before the throne will flow. It's time to put out the, the, the barriers for the oil. It's time. The jars. Put out your jars. It's time. This is a beautiful time that we are in. He's a spirit of reality. And Jesus lived in union with Holy Spirit. And he wants us to come in union. And you know, on earth, we're still going to see miraculous miracles. In fact, I believe with all my heart, we're going to see more miracles. We're going to see miracles like that. We're going to start walking in the streets. I trust God for that. And our shadow will bring the glory of God. We will usher in His glory. But He cannot do that for a fearful bride. Are you afraid of physical death? Are you afraid of not eating? I said to the girls yesterday, man, you guys have everything. You have so many milks. Half and half full, pumpkin, vanilla, and the best is the strawberry. We enter in a time where you're going to see what the Father is doing. And I wonder if you woke up and see even the darkness that is busy exposing is the Father busy doing. Why are you afraid, he says. We will see the things the Father's doing. We will hear the words the Father's speaking. He will give a strategy what to do. Now, if you think of Lazarus, he was dying. Not even sickness, disease, what's going on in Parliament right now is making Jesus anxious because he's not living in time. Right? As right as it seems, we want Jesus to rush to Lazarus and help him. But Jesus was aware of another reality. Have you given your children to God and waiting every day? I've learned the power of this beautiful prayer in Matthew 6. Our Father in heaven. Let me take more time to exalt you than I have time to worry. Let me take more time to praise you and lift my countenance unto you and trust all I have in your hands. May I exalt you already for what you will do. Because whatever you gaze upon, you become. Let your will be done as it is in heaven, may it be today on earth. So he wasn't anxious because he was conscious of heaven. He had a heavenly conscience. He was conscious of what his father's will is. His father's perfect time is. And what I loved also from the conference was like, everyone has a purpose on this earth. And you know, I look at all this life. I mean, he really has a small life, but he's very adamant about his purpose. His purpose is the word. His purpose is his spirit. He's going to have no excuse. Even if you lie flat the whole day in a coma, your spirit has no excuse. So what about us? Lazarus was raised from the dead. But God is saying, I want you to have a need for my spirit. 
I want you to live with a knowing that anxious thoughts is just pull you down. It doesn't help you. It's not lifting you up. It's not feeding your spirit. So how do I need to walk in the spirit today in every situation? I need to be aware of God's involvement in my life. God is not a far God. He's right here. But bring him in. Make your spirit part of your everyday life. Talk to God. Speak to him. Walk with him in the, in the street, in your car, wherever you go. It's not about this time or this time. It's about being one. Being one. For my thoughts, Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So God has a system of thoughts and ways that are totally on another level. And what he asks of us today, he invites us into his realm. He invites us in his kingdom. The kingdom age, the time has drawn near. So beloved of God, brothers, sisters, know that we're not mere human beings. We belong to God. This is a temple for his glory. And God is preparing this temple. So, around your heart, around the walls of Jerusalem, there are walls. So, in, on earth, we all get hurt. And we start building with stones a protection wall to protect my heart. Because I will protect my heart. And to protect it more better, I have ways that I use. I will fight or I'll scream, or I won't talk. You know, we have that ways. And think, I protect my heart. You work for the enemy. Because that is just a trauma persona. It's a personality I become. The treasure are inside there. The treasure are inside. So God says, tell me, do you have a stony heart? Or is it ice? Because the time of the fire is here. Are you allowing God to bring his heavenly fire? To melt the ice? To take away the stones? Because he needs living stones to build this house. Living stones. He's not going to use a building. He's going to use a person. Who lives there and here. Amen. And can bring kingdom down to earth. And reveal his glory. Yeah. And speak the word of truth. And look reality in the eyes. And say, hey, we need to look and think with the wisdom of God. Make sure I don't run after my idols in my heart. So God has a system of thoughts. And his ways are another plane. So we each are a temple of Holy Spirit, but we must cultivate a listening heart. Eyes that have not seen, ears that have not heard. This is what this age is going to bring forth. You will even sleep and God will reveal things to you. A child of God is not someone who lives out of a natural life. And just hoping God will bless me, bless me, bless me, God. God is more for us than that. Jesus set a standard and he's given us his spirit to follow through. So how does it look? Spirit filled. You see, when you're born again, your journey starts. And that journey is the journey with Holy Spirit. But he gives us the help to grow in the spirit. I always use this example because I can't get better one. You know, when you buy a, a packet of balloons, God is just so amazing that he gives us all the so, same opportunity. So I think 
my opinion, three verse six, our spirit is like that balloon. The same, all of us. But you see, when you start doing this, and as the wind blow, in the silent of the night, his ruach filled the house, and the heart of man become filled with the spirit of the living God. And living water will start flowing from your innermost being. And your spirit, heart, mind connect to the heart of the Father. And kingdom come down to earth. And life will start flowing out. And God's purpose for the house will come alive. May even the house of parliament come alive. May we pray against the blood of the babies. May the blood of Jesus silent that. So spiritful, baptized in power. Father, will you baptize me in your power so that I can be effective for your kingdom? And then we will start acting like Jesus. We will have the power of the God gene coming alive. You see, when the kingdom age turn, I'm not going to say, oh, my father or my mother or my this or my that. I am going to look up and I say, I'm a new creation. Christ filled. And the God gene, the God gene identity, character, power come alive. What was very interesting of that conference, you can look at all those people, none of them are the same as before. None of them. None of them. They all have a purpose. They all are driven. They all know what they sent back for. They all know their mission. They know. There's a voice in your heart. There's a voice in your heart. There's a voice in your heart. It's the voice of your upper father. And he's telling you, I love you. I have a destiny for you. I have an eternal purpose for you. Right here on earth, connect to that eternal purpose. So when Paul talks about, and he says it in Ephesians, he says, the power to raise us from the dead. He says there was a dark ruler on the earth, earthly realm, who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God, to the reality of God, you see. He says corruption was in us, for we birthed and expressed through the deeds and the desires of the self-life. So self-life die. And I get into a place My heart is for you, God. What do you want, Father? I hope your spirit can hear that. What do you want, Father? How about that in a prayer? Oh, you already gave it in Matthew 6. All this Bible in Matthew 6 is is done. He can't read it anymore because his finger did that. His finger did that. How about when you have something that you need? What do you want, Father? I know you're going to say to me, but he says I can ask anything. You're right, you may, because he's your father. But you enter into a certain place. You say, God, may my will bow down before your will. May my desire bow before your desire. May myself bow before any human acceptance. May I never do that, but may I bow before you. What do you want? That place, that place take you and rest. Your perfect will be done. You know, To be filled by the Spirit, we need new, fresh oil. I don't know if you know, but oil can become old. And old oil stinks. It does. Lord, will you clean me? Will you erase what was not from you? 
Will you give me the revelation knowledge of Christ? John the Revelator told us. He walked before, he gave us the book of Revelation, and he said, Brethren, he's looking for your heart. That I has against you. That I has against you. You lost your first love. I brought some books this time. And in this book, one of the letters Aldo wrote was just after he came back and he couldn't speak, he wrote. He says, Mom, we are the Laodicea Church. We lost our first love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your soul, your mind, your strength. Love God. Body of Christ. Is this the body? Do we trust God that we die and he rose through us? May Christ be exalted. Will you fill us again? In the book of Acts, we see a spirit-filled body. Someone said the other day to me, these things that you talk about happened in the book of Acts. I said, my, my dear brother, the age has come. Yes. And you will witness that. God is in the house. And even this house, Shekinah glory, the world will witness miracles in this house. Yes. People around the world will experience the miracle power of Christ, right. our Redeemer. Right. So God's desire is to take us deeper into eternal life. Having spiritual gifts doesn't mean that you have filled with the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit constantly. Yes. Timothy said to, Paul said to Timothy, fire up the gifts. Fire up the gifts. Use your gifts. Stir it up. Train your spirit in godliness. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, what you're going through, thank God. Thank you, Lord, that you strengthened my spirit for this. Thank you, Lord. I'm ready. The body of Christ is not in a very good, fit position. They are angry, nasty, filled with hatred. God wants to, us to be a mature spirit. He's coming for a mature bride. He wants us to walk in eternal life. And he wants to touch our hearts. So how do I do that? I need to get out of the channel of self into eternal. Eternal. Your heart can hear God. Your heart is ready. Your spirit heart is so ready. Zechariah 4, 6 teach us that it's not by might or power, but it's by the spirit of the Lord that we succeed. Acts 2, 17 tells us that in the last days, God seeks to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I love the word, pour out all flesh. You know, when, when God gives anointing, he doesn't give a drop. He opened up the storehouse of heaven. I wonder if you know that with your divine inheritance, what is yours? I wonder if you know that. But we live in a poverty mentality. We live in a mentality of, oh, poor me. God wants us to rise above the pressure. Rise above what you go through. I quickly want to show you some, um, some letters that I showed at the conference again. Um, I have to do something now, is it? All right. So this is my family right now. That's Josh and that's Aldu. 
I just quickly I read it last time, but I really feel in my spirit to share that again. You can go to the letter. God gave us his spirit to help us with all things we struggle with. We will then go and offer ourselves to God. God says, he sent me back to tell the world that Jesus is alive. We must be obedient and keep on speaking life in this situation. Mom, will you always be obedient and do what Jesus asks you to do? Is that eternal? Next. Okay, let me see if I can read that. Okay, this is in, in Afrikaans, so I'm going to translate. I'm just going to do this one. To everyone that seeks Jesus' presence, please, will you be ready when he comes to fetch us? It's going to be quicker than what you think. Will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Jesus paid the full price for you and me. He showed me everything in heaven, and he also showed me hell. Believe me, you don't want to go to hell. Will you please accept him? He loves you so much. And this is what I want to read. Because many people on that conference said the same. He said, You are the reason why he sent me back. I didn't want to come back. But he wants you to be ready. And that made my heart jump up. And I said, God, forgive me for all the years that I just prayed for having it easier. Yeah. Having an easier road. Taking thrones at people that said, you don't have enough faith. Why is your child not healed? Reality. It's truth. I have a jaw after 20 years of reality that broke. So I had to get replacements. And it was very, very painful when I was here last, year, last time. It was really, really a challenge. And I sat at one place and I was holding my face. The inflammation was very much and I was in pain. And somebody came up and said, what's wrong? And I'm like, it's okay. It's my job, but it's okay. You know, I'm going back and I'm going to have surgery. And the person looked at me very disgusted and said, how can you have surgery? Don't you trust God? Why don't you just pray? Wow, I'm praying. I promise you, I pray. I said, How about you pray for me? I had to go back and I had to get surgery. I praise God for this surgery. And in God's will, I'm going to have the other one done January. I'm still on earth. But there's a, there's a higher mark. There's a higher price. You can go. Jesus talked to me about his word and his second coming, which is close. Do you know, mom, those who have truly accepted Jesus are the ones who lay down their lives for him. He's on his way to fetch a bride. I'm his bride. And I want everyone to come with us. Go. Mom, do you know you're called by Jesus? Know that you have to be obedient. Be holy. Please show the people that we must honor God. We must fear him. He's holy. And he showed me that pride is repulsive to him. Please lay down your preconceived ideas. God is God. And God is on the throne. Next. The whole world has been given a chance to lay down their lives. God says we must listen. He's on his way for a living bride. A spirit bride. Allow him to wash you with the blood of Jesus. 
Wisdom says it's the, his desire of the, the, it is the desire of the flesh that keeps people from being the bride. He says we must stop wanting to be who we are not. He says people must be who God wants them to be. And the Bible tells us how. He cries because there are many who will take back their words one day. My life is in his hands, mom. There's a lot of people who don't walk in Jesus' will for their lives. Let your will be done. Thank you. So that's all that today. So he went through a very bad time about two, three years ago, and he nearly died. And I went out the room and I said to the Lord, because he was blue, and I said, Lord, by this time, I'm not fighting anymore. He belongs to you. And I just said these words, but your perfect will be done. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. And I had peace. I don't think I'm better than anyone, but I had peace. And today I can look at death and say, well, tell me, where's your sting? And that can happen when eternal life becomes your portion. And that's what he's doing every day. He has a short-term memory now of, of a day, maybe. Six o'clock we will eat, and eight o'clock he will ask, when are we eating? And not even that is, is frightening to me. Because I see something. And I learned something so huge. You can sit right here, and your spirit can be dead. We need the Zoe life of Christ. We need life. We need life. And that life is in Christ. It's not a fearful life. It's not time consumed. Go. Go. And when you pray, there's a posture. And please don't tell me, don't walk out and say, I say, if you don't go on your knees. I'm not saying that. But there's a reverent fear of God that I see, that I taste, that when I put him in bed at night is the greatest joy that a person can have to let the presence of God fill the house. And even in the imperfect of the world, you taste perfect love. And just like you explained about that family, I can say today, me and my husband, we would not have been here if it wasn't for this journey. With that, I'm not saying it's God's will. No. But we're in a broken world. But please be considerate with your words. Be considerate when you just say to someone, you don't have enough faith, or God can't meet you because your faith is not good enough. You know, it's not about that. He says you need mustard seed faith, so please talk to me about it. It's the place that you take in. It's the position yourself in the heart of the Father. Go. Go. So yes, that's one of our schools we have projects in Africa where we have schools, and I think it's a privilege that God gave us to be in Africa, to be able to invest in, in the real poor of the poor. But not only building schools, but creating safe places for them. There's a lot of child trafficking going on. So to be there to protect them, to help them, and to build a foundation in the house. So I want to really, out of my heart, thank Pastor Joe and Melinda for what you have done for us and all of you who contribute and help us to do what we do. I know the wonderful work that Heidi Baker is also doing. And you know, if you start tasting of that, you can't have it differently. Because God plants everyone where he wants us. And if God wants us to come here, he will make a way. If not, he says, do that, we do that. I want his way in my life. His will, that's all. Yeah. Go. So that's me. 
And that's God. So let's give God a hand.